welcome to this presentation. This is the 20th in the series of short videos, each featuring five multiple choice questions covering diverse unrelated aspects of psychiatry. Each MCQ has four options of which one is correct. Brief information related to the questions will be provided. These are the five topics. Question one, which of the following is correct regarding side effects of lithium? Please go through the four options and make your choice. If you want, you can pause the video while you decide your answer. The correct answer is B. With respect to renal side effects, lithium impairs tubular function earlier than glomerular function. Diabetes insipidus and interstitial nephritis are manifestations of tubular dysfunction and these occur earlier than raised creatinine which indicates glomerular impairment. The other three options are incorrect. A is incorrect because lithium has been associated with hyper parathyroidism and hypercalcemia. B is incorrect because lithium induced hypothyroidism is far more common in females similar to hypothyroidism in general, which is also much more common in females. C is incorrect because once daily dosing is preferable to twice daily dosing to reduce risk of renal side effects due to lithium. Question two, which of the following is correct regarding negative symptoms. Please go through the options and make your choice. The correct answer is C. Negative symptoms are highly prevalent even in initial stages of psychosis. Although negative symptoms have traditionally been associated with chronic psychosis, recent studies have shown a high prevalence even in early onset psychosis samples of children and adolescents. The other three statements are incorrect. A is incorrect because delusional mood is not a negative symptom, it is a positive symptom. The five domains of negative symptom are alogia, blunted affect, evolution, anhedonia, and asociality. B is incorrect because there are well-validated rating scales for assessing negative symptoms, and I have listed four of these. D is incorrect because Secondary negative symptoms are more amenable to treatment than primary negative symptoms. Primary negative symptoms are considered an intrinsic part of the disease and are more treatment resistant, while secondary negative symptoms are due to factors such as medication side effects or comorbid depression and may respond when those factors are addressed. Question three, which of the following is not 
a term that is associated with the psychology of cults. Please go through the four options and choose your answer. The answer is D, kin selection. Kin selection is not a term that is associated with the psychology of cults. This is a term that was originally used in evolutionary biology and in psychology it has been applied in relation to altruism. The other three terms are associated with cult psychology. Confirmation bias refers to the tendency of cult members to only seek out information that confirms their pre-existing beliefs while dismissing information that contradicts those beliefs. In de-individuation, individu the new cult member gradually loses his or her individuality, leading to increased willingness to conform to the cult's norms. Indoctrination refers to the systematic and coercive process through which attitudes and belief systems of individuals are manipulated and replaced with the exclusive ideologies of the cult. Question 4. Who among the following coined the term agoraphobia? Please go through the options and choose your answer. The correct answer is D. Carl Westphal. He coined the term agoraphobia. He was a German psychiatrist. The other three have also coined important terms in relation to psychiatry. Eugene Bloiler was a Swiss psychiatrist who coined the term schizophrenia. Sir William Gull was a British physician who introduced the concept of anorexia nervosa. Emil Kriplin was a German psychiatrist who coined the terms manic depressive insanity and dementia precox. The final question, which of the following is not appropriate in a patient with schizophrenia who has gained significant weight after starting olanzapine? Please go through the options and choose your answer. The answer is D. Phentermine as an adjunct is not appropriate in a patient with schizophrenia who has gained significant weight after starting olanzapine. Although phentermine as an appetite suppressant can result in significant weight loss, it is contraindicated contraindicated in patients with schizophrenia as it can induce psychosis. The other three options are appropriate. Aripiprazole can be used either as an alternative or as an adjunct to olanzapine. Lifestyle modification advice should be implemented in any patient, especially in those who are taking medicines that can cause significant weight gain. Metformin as an adjunct is appropriate even if the patient does not have diabetes. Similarly, other potentially useful adjuncts include 
the glucagon like peptide 1 receptor agonist like liraglutide and the anti epileptic topiramate. That brings us to the end of this presentation. Hope you found the information useful. Thank you for watching.